your mental health suffers the impact that can devastate you on just not only yourself, but others in your family. Author and psychotherapist Kelly Kitley is joining us now to discuss ways to ensure you're safely treating your mental health. And this is such an important conversation because I think a lot of people, especially let's talk moms, they they don't know necessarily where mental health is affected or they're just having a busy day and they're taking a lot on. Like, where is that line? Thank you for asking that question okay. because I think <laughs> that there is a normalization of being a parent is just go, 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 and you're supposed to put your family first and, yeah. you know, not put your oxygen mask on first and it's actually the opposite mm -hmm. and so in order for our family to be feeling the best we do need to take care of ourselves first and foremost and how do you do that is it just setting aside the time to breathe or to go do something for yourself or is it more set making an appointment to go see a therapist does everyone need to go see a therapist oh, I am on the bandwagon of saying I wish it was a prerequisite that everybody had to be in therapy for one year of their life because I think we become more relatable, yeah. more self-aware, have more empathy, but we do need to make a shift and start looking at mental health similarly as we look at going in for your yearly physical. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Okay. I, I mean, what does it do to your kids and maybe your relationship? If you're in that space where you're just frustrated at the, at the end of the day mm -hmm. and you're not making the time for yourself or getting therapy. And that's a reality. I mean, we have a wide range of emotion yeah. and we and it's important for us to model that too. But I think what ultimately ends up happening is if we're not in a great space and our symptoms are lasting longer than two weeks, we're more irritable. Mm -hmm. We don't want to go out. We don't want to socialize. Mm -hmm. We're not moving our body. Our nutrition is off. Then it's it's probably time to seek some help or okay. check in with a trusted professional. Mm -hmm. But I think our kids can pick up on, on our mood and might notice that we're more short fused and it is okay to be short fused <laughs> with your kids, we are human, <laughs> um, especially if, during this time of year. Mm -hmm. But what is most important is you don't hide it from them because mm -hmm. they pick up on it and then they start internalizing it and thinking, did I do something wrong? Is mom or dad mad at me? And so being able to put language it, for them to be able to say, I'm feeling worried about things. I'm, my mood is really affected. I think I'm gonna talk to my doctor. Or, you know, you don't wanna dump your issues on your kids because right. that oh is right. gosh, yeah. not helpful right, right, or right. healthy. But be able to model that behavior of breathing, taking time for yourself, making sure that you are sleeping or talking to somebody else mm -hmm. that you trust. Mm -hmm. So. Therapists are not necessarily something that everyone can afford to go see. Are there other ways that people can seek help? Can you talk to a friend? Can you talk to their apps out there? Their mm -hmm. phone numbers mm -hmm. that you can call? Are those considered good options? I think any connection that you can make with somebody else and tell on yourself and be transparent and open and candid is a first step. Okay. And since the pandemic, there are so many other options. There are apps, there are free resources online, mm -hmm. especially for women. And so if you're having a hard time finding a therapist, there are groups online that you can connect mm -hmm. with and find support. But it is important to recognize that if you are feeling in crisis or it does feel like you're recognizing your your symptoms are more than you can handle or somebody in your family is picking up on some of your mm -hmm. symptoms that you do th there is a new um number 988 yes. that mm -hmm. is uh, a crisis line that is very accessible for anybody and it will tap you into a local resource to be able to talk to somebody mm -hmm. and talk about next steps. So I always encourage people to take that first step because that is the most important. Or what if somebody's watch is like, I'm not there yet, but how do they preserve not getting there? So flood yourself with information, okay. read books, listen to podcasts, um, really try to engage in some journaling or listening to music mm. or being able to really heighten your mood. Sometimes people will report, I'm trying all these things and yeah. it's not really shifting my mood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then you know that you're in this kind of mucky yeah. water that, yeah. that um, you really do need some extra help, whether and, that's medication or therapy. And I would think you also should be listening to what people around you are saying. I yeah. mean, there's a certain level of you you block out what other people are saying, but if you're hearing multiple you're people tell time, you, right? yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, you're, you're sounding, drinking you're too much, right? or you're <laughs> right. doing whatever. Those are yeah. kind of key signs yes. as well, would you say? Absolutely, and also listen to what your own internal dialogue is. I think, you know, the message that I tell my clients is we're not responsible for our first thought. It's our preceding thoughts. Ooh, so okay. if you're recognizing, you know, that you have low self 
self-esteem or you're putting yourself down or you're feeling really low. Try not to find yourself getting in that cycle of going down that rabbit hole. Shift your thought and say, okay, what action can I take today to try to change that? Love it. All right, Kelly, Kelly thank you for coming in. Great yeah. advice as always. Her thank information you. is there, kellykitley.com.